In the previous video, we learned about what a black hole is, types of black holes that exist in the universe, what conditions favor the formation of a black hole, and we also went on to discuss about what lies deep inside a black hole. Let's dig deeper to learn about some interesting and exciting theories related to these mysterious objects. There are many theories that come to mind when we talk about black holes and I'll take you through some of them. Let's start with the theory of relativity, which Einstein came up with in 1905. Theory of relativity or simple relativity encompasses two theories of Albert Einstein, special relativity and general relativity. At 26, Albert Einstein figured out a new theory of space and time. He treated space and time as one thing. But it turns out Albert was just warming up. He wasn't satisfied with Isaac Newton's mysterious force of gravity. He started his own theory. Mass causes space-time to curve. The natural motion of things is to follow the simplest path through space-time. But since objects with mass curve space-time, stuff moves towards most massive object. That's what we feel as gravity. It's warped space-time that keeps our feet on the ground. Let us look at an example to understand the space-time curve better. Take a cloth and pull the four edges. If we keep a heavy ball on the cloth, the cloth curves inwards depending upon the mass of the ball. And now, if we make a small ball to revolve around the big ball, the small ball will orbit around the big ball until it falls inside the depression created by the big ball. This is how gravity works, by attracting the smaller mass objects near it to orbit over the larger mass ones. In the case of a black hole, Due to the infinite mass black holes possess, the space-time curves are much deeper and that's the reason why even light cannot escape the black hole. This leads to another major theory. The information paradox. If even light cannot escape from the black hole, then how can we retrieve information about the black hole? Is that lost if the black hole disappears? This is known as the information paradox. But Stephen Hawking has found a way to retrieve the information. Using the theoretical values, he found that the black hole also emits some kind of radiation, which was later named as Hawking radiation. Suppose you have a black hole and you throw a 1 kg fish into a black hole. According to Stephen Hawking, a certain amount of radiation comes out. The radiation that comes out only knows about the mass of the object. So the alternate thing to think about is suppose we throw a 1 kg textbook. The Hawking radiation that comes out is the same. But it follows then that the radiation doesn't distinguish between the fish and the book. So the information that told you that it was a fish as compared to the book is destroyed by the black hole. That is why Hawking said that black holes gobble information. And this is the information paradox. Traveling inside a black hole. Scientists have seen real black holes in action. Consuming unsuspecting stars that pass too close. But where reality ends and fiction takes over is at the edge of a black hole a place called Event Horizon, where no spacecraft has ever gone. So whatever happens beyond that boundary inside of a black hole is anyone's guess. Scientists agree that if you travel far enough into a black hole, gravity will eventually become so strong that it kills anything in its path. But sci-fi films are more optimistic, depicting black holes as portals through space and time or gateways to other dimensions. And it turns out some scientists now think that sci-fi buffs may be onto something. It just takes the right kind of black hole. When we choose to enter a black hole of small size, we get torn apart and turn into a shape of spaghetti due to the force of gravity exerted by the black hole, which pulls the leg first as it is nearer to it, and then the whole body. But if we choose the supermassive black hole, which is million times massive than our sun, like the Sagittarius A star, which is 4 million times greater than our sun, then the force of gravity exerted by them will be equally spread throughout our body. So we may get nearer to the event horizon or even pass into the black hole. At the center of every black hole is a point of infinite density called the singularity. It's what gives black holes a strong gravitational pull. And for decades, scientists thought singularities were all the same. So anything that passed the event horizon would be destroyed the same way by being stretched and pulled like an infinitely long piece of spaghetti. Singularity. Now let us assume that we are in the deepest point known as singularity. A singularity is a point where all the physics laws fail to work, where the unknown laws exist 
and mass is considered infinite. It is also the only point where time dimension is in our country. Outside the black hole, we can move in 3D space, but time always flows in one forward direction. But when we enter into a black hole, according to general theory of relativity, space and time switch roles. That is, we can only move in one forward direction in space, that too only towards the center of the black hole. But we can travel across time in any direction. And that's how scientists say time travel is possible inside a black hole. Wormholes. Things of mere science fiction or natural wonders. Well, right now it's only a theoretical field, but who knows what the future holds. Simply put, wormhole is a proposed structure that links two places in space-time together. It's usually visualized as a giant tunnel. You must have seen paper example in various films or demonstrations. When two dots are drawn at opposite ends of the paper, the paper is folded in half before someone pierces it, connecting the two dots with a pencil. This example is probably the best and easiest way to show the phenomenon. The theory suggests that matter and light that is sucked into a black hole on one end is spat out at the other at a point known as white hole. A white hole will be located somewhere in the galaxy or perhaps in another dimension. These theoretical wormholes can be utilized for a variety of different reasons. Some say they could be used faster than light travel. As a part of far off future existence, so advanced beings can zap between galaxies with wormholes creating a shortcut between two destinations. Now, we're at the end of the video and also at the end of a black hole. Yes, even black holes have an end, according to Stephen Hawking. He came up with a theory that every black hole should constantly emit electromagnetic radiation known as Hawking radiation as we saw earlier. Consider a pair of virtual photons which is created near the event horizon in such a way that one of the photons appears directly in front of the event horizon. The first photon will be absorbed by the black hole while the other photon which is a positive energy particle narrowly escapes from the event horizon. Annihilation of the virtual particles is not possible since the escape photon lost the other photon inside the black hole. But from where does the photon get its energy? The escape photon gets its energy from the black hole itself. Quantum effects make virtual particles become real causing black hole to lose energy and also evaporate as a result. This radiation is called the Hawking radiation. As the black hole gives its energy away to all the virtual photon it emits, its mass decreases, loses its energy and starts to shrink. And that becomes the end of a black hole. Don't forget to like, share and comment and please do subscribe to our channel.